Hello and welcome to today's onboarding webinar for the Essential Digital Skills Qualification or ADSQ. If you haven't already done so, um, please put something into the question box just to let me know you can hear me okay. You'll find this at the bottom of the webinar control panel at the right hand side of your screen. We do encourage questions, so please add them into the question box. And no question is a silly question. And if I'm not able to answer them today, I will follow up with my NCFE colleagues. This session will be recorded and shared on our YouTube channel. Now you'll see on the screen now that we're going to cover in this webinar. So the session focuses on the essential digital skills qualification at entry level three and level one. My name is Rachel Webster. I'm one of NCFE's curriculum development officers, and I'm responsible for supporting centres through the planning, onboarding and CPD process for the NCFE cash qualifications, focusing specifically on EDSQ and the digital T-levels. Just a little bit about my background. I've been um, with the provider development team since February with a background of teaching ICT in secondary, then post 16 within a private training organisation and also in a college. I have vast experience of delivering and planning IT related courses ranging from entry level three right the way through to apprenticeships. In addition, I've also worked as a quality manager and I've led CPD and standardization sessions. Now we'll also be um, joined today by Luke Corden, who will provide information on our portfolio of skills assessment tools that can support the essential digital skills qualification. Now, I would just like to begin with um, a poll about your current confidence levels. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being low and 10 being high, how would you rate your current confidence level regarding knowledge and understanding of the essential digital skills? So, I'm just going to launch the poll. And I'll just give you all um, a few moments just to um, place a, um, a vote. Thank you, I can see votes coming through. I'll just give it a few more moments. Okay, it looks like everybody has voted now and we have a 50-50 split. So we've got 50% at one and two and 50% at seven and eight. So I do hope this, um, this session will help you and any questions, please add them to the question box. So moving on now to the qualification overview and purpose. The essential digital skills are more important than ever. So since 2020, we've experienced a world where face-to-face -face communication hasn't been possible and therefore having a grasp on digital technology and communication is vital to stay connected. So the purpose of the essential digital skills qualification at entry level three and level one is to allow learners to demonstrate understanding of and competency in the essential digital skills they're going to need for life, including work at level one. It will enable learners to engage with digital services and products in everyday life and work. The minimum age for this qualification is 16 Learners who achieve the um, entry level three qualification could progress on the level one and learners who achieve at level one can progress to a suitable level two qualification. 
Cent is all responsible for ensuring that the qualification is appropriate for the age and ability of the learners. They need to make sure that learners can fulfil the requirements of the learning outcomes and comply with the relevant literacy, numeracy and health safety um, aspects of the qualification. Learners registered on this qualification should not undertake any other qualification at the same level with the same or a very similar title as the duplication of learner may affect your funding eligibility. Now, if we look at the statistics on the screen and reflect on the past couple of years, with almost all interaction taking place online, we can begin to understand the urgent need to reach out to the 22% of the adult population who are without the digital skills and need for everyday life. And further statistics can determine whether your centre decides to offer this essential digital skills qualification. An estimated 9 million people, that's 16%, are unable to use the internet or their devices without assistance. 6.5 million, that's 12% of people, cannot open apps. Two thirds, that's 66% of those online have not used the internet or digital apps and tools to manage their health. 27% of those in full-time education are concerned their digital skills aren't good enough. And then 20% of the UK workforce do not believe their digital skills are um, good enough either. So adequate digital skills can have an impact upon social mobility. So there's a good reason for your learners to want to achieve this qualification, either for the CVs, or to improve their personal lives both financially and then open up new avenues for their um, social lives. So people who are less digitally engaged will spend an average £348 more per year on the household bills. Four in ten benefit claimants have very low digital engagement. People with an impairment are 25% um, less likely to have the skills to access um, devices and to get online by themselves. And people with an annual household income of £50,000 or more are 40% more likely to have a foundation digital skills than those earning less than £17,500. And finally, 61% of highly digital citizens have used the internet to successfully apply for a job. So let's start off um, at the beginning of the journey. So having a comprehensive initial assessment and induction stage is going to be vital, as learners may be starting their ADSQ after many months or even years out of learning and centres will need to ensure the learner, firstly, can enter the programme of study at the level that is appropriate to them. Secondly, the assessments also allow the learner to be able to plan their individual achievable learning goals. So please plan your induction activities in a way that fully assesses your learner's starting points and potentials. Initial assessments can help the tutor or assessor to ascertain any special learning requirements disclose any information that needs to be shared and also allow for individual requirements to be planned and met. So the digital um, entitlement will support learners with no or low digital skills. They will be fully funded and the condition of that funding is that the learner sets an initial assessment to identify the level they're working towards. So you must carry out an initial assessment using current assessment tools based on national standards for the essential digital skills. Carry out an appropriate diagnostic assessment to inform and structure a learner file to use as a basis for a programme of study. Enrol the learner on a level above what, they, um, what they're assessed at and to be able to provide evidence of this. Deliver ongoing assessment to support learning and then um, record the evidence of all the assessment outcomes.
Now, I'm going to hand over to um, Luke now, who's going to demonstrate our diagnostic and skills assessment tool to support the essential um, digital skills qualification. So I'm just going to pass control over now. Go. That's fantastic. Thank you for that, Rachel. So, um, as she said, there we're going to evidence the assessment tool that we have here at NCFE. It's a standalone portal from the rest of the site. Um, and what I'm going to show you is the learner view, how they can take that initial assessment that is required, and also the other supporting tools we have that will upskill your learners um, to the higher level of EDS competency. So what you can see on the screen now is the learner view of that platform. As soon as they log in, you'll be able to see it's very, very minimal. The only thing a learner can do on this platform is sit the assessment itself and then work on the supporting resources um, that are automatically generated for you off the back of the assessment being completed. As, as you can see, the learner has a tab on their homepage for essential digital skills. And all they have to do is click onto that in order to start the assessment. Now, it's going to show them a short video just explaining that what they're about to do isn't a formal exam. It's simply here to understand where they're at and how we can then support them in order to upskill them um, through their learning journey. And then after that, it jumps straight into the question. So what we have here is a using device handling and information question. Each question has a unique ID number. Um, that you'll be able to quote should you ever find anything on the platform that you want to query. Also, for the learner to actually use here, what we have is the main question in the middle of the page. Clicking on the answer will move them forward. And then they have the back and forward arrows in the bottom left and right corners there. You'll notice that there is a bar here just below where it says NCFE, and that will fill up as the learner answers the questions. Um, allowing them to see how long they have left within their assessment. Now, if they don't understand a question, there's also a button here that says don't know, and that will reflect from the tutor perspective when overviewing that learner's results that they perhaps need a bit of additional support within that particular area. And now all of the questions within the assessments that we have are up to the national standard and they're desired um, to test all of the components that make up the essential digital skills qualification. Now, also within this page, there's a few accessibility features, making it easier for all learners to complete this assessment. So in the top left corner, we've got a little icon there. And if I click on that, I can have every question read out to me using that autoplay audio button. I can make the text larger or smaller on the screen. And I also have themes here to support dyslexia and color blindness as well that back to the default and it's nice and simple for the learner to complete they'd go through the questions up until this part was 100 percent full and then at that point it's on to the resources now i'm just going to go and take a look at those resources on this demo account so i'm going to click in the top right corner I'm on my learner's profile and then where i've got a tab here for isp that is going to allow me to access the resources so ISP stands for Individualized Skills Plan, which means all learners will have a bespoke amount of resources depending on how they've done in the initial assessment. And the purpose of this platform is to find out where your learner is at, provide them with the support in order to upskill them and get them exam ready, and then use these along with other resources in order to teach them the skills relevant um, to complete that. Now, within the ISP, you'll see we've got all of the topics that are prescribed to the learner. We can see the level, so either entry level or level one. Using these drop downs here, we're able to view the criteria uh, within that topic, what's going to be tested, you know, when the learner clicks on this continue button and actually works through that topic. And also in the middle, we can see the progress that the learner has made as well. So we've got 50% there already and yet we still have a continue button so this 50 percent is embedded knowledge the learner has some understanding within that topic but they're not quite all the way there 
Therefore, we've given them a resource in order to get that 50 up to 100, just as you can see below. And in terms of the learner's capabilities on the platform, it's as simple as that. We do try to keep it very minimal in order for them to not access things that they shouldn't see and also make it a streamlined process from start of that initial assessment to completing their individual skills plan. Now that is everything from a learner perspective. I'll give you a quick overview of what your tutors will be able to do to support learners on the site and also overview those assessment results and those ISPs being completed as well. So logging in as a tutor now, we've got a little bit more functionality than what a learner has. We can't take the assessments ourselves through our homepage because we're geared up to support learners and look at their assessment results. So I'd go into administration there on my side toolbar, into users, and then I've got a list of students for teacher. Then once I'm in there, I can see all of my learners and we'll take this learner, for example, go into view user. I'm going to be back at their profile page and I'll be able to look at their assessment results and do a couple more features within here as well. So we've got essential digital skills. If I go into results, it's going to show me all instances of a completed IA that this learner has done. So as you can see there, we've got an add attempt button. We're able to set multiple assessments for our learners so we can continuously check their program. And then as you'll notice, we've got a compare feature here. So we can tick compare and compare. It'll put the two assessment results side by side and we're able to see exactly what progress they've made from point A to point B. So. If I take this completed initial assessment and go into results, we'll be able to see how the learners are tracked throughout there. So we've got all the generic information at the top. We can see when and how long it took the learner to complete this assessment. We've got their learner details there as well. And then we get a breakdown of each of the sections that they were tested within. So again, they are all up to the national standard. And then we have the working towards level for each of those there. And we have a spiky profile tool on the site as well, which means each section will be graded at a bespoke level based on how the learner answers the questions when they're within that section. It can move up and down, as you can see on the screen. Working to foundation within some topics, we're already competent at level one in others. Here, you're able to print this assessment result and also save as a PDF within there as well. And then as well as that, we can view all answers, correct and incorrect, or we can just view the incorrect answers that the learner did. And we can go through that with them and see if we can use that as a teaching resource. Now, also within the learner's profile, we can view their individual skills plan, just using that tab there. And what we're able to do is assign additional resource in order to further upskill that learner. So as I said, we have all of the topics listed from entry level down to level one there and we can now open the topic as a tutor and not complete it for the learner but we're able to see what would actually be presented if that learner was completing that resource and then also within these blue drop downs here we can view the criteria of a topic but we can actually assign further content using that button there so if we understand a learner is beginning to get really competent within using devices at entry level, we can actually assign them the level one resources in order to see where they're at in relation to the level one content. So you can see all of that there is ticked, it's already assigned to the learner. So I'll close that one down. I'll go to other levels, hit the drop down, press assign, and all of my topics have now changed to level one. I'll go into a level one topic that's not assigned. So we've got communicating at level one. I can select all, press save, and I've now assigned two additional pieces of criteria for the learner to have as a resource within there. That's been assigned onto the ISP, 0% because it wasn't assigned previously, and the learner has a full resource now in order to work through, complete, and obtain the knowledge for communicating at level one. So it's an end-to-end -end initial assessment and resource tool that is designed to find out where your learner is at upon starting and their EDS learning journey, giving them the resources to upskill them through the levels and an ability to continuously initially assess them to see how much progress they are making within there. 
if you have any questions surrounding what I've just showed you there, I'd be happy for you to pop them into the chat uh, or we'll have some time at the end in order um, for you to ask questions as well. So I'm going to pass it back across to Rachel now. Thank you so much um, for your time, Luke, this morning. That was lovely. So moving on now to um, the, the content. So the essential digital skills at entry level is designed for adults with little or no prior experience of using digital devices or the internet. Um, and at level one, the qualification is for adults with some experience of using digital devices and the internet, but lacking secure basic, basic digital skills. So it may be um, required that the tutor or assessor may carry out an, an observation at level one as well. And it's important to note that these qualifications um, don't replace or they don't substitute for the ICT functional skills. The um, functional skills IT still remain live for you to register and assess your learners for. So both these qualifications are assessed by a multi-choice question paper and a task-based assessment. And there may be some tasks that need to be observed, such as sending a, a text message or video calling or, or making a social media post, as these are quite difficult to assess during the assessment. Centres are responsible for ensuring that this qualification is appropriate for the age and ability of the learner, and they may need to make sure that the learner can fulfil the requirements of the learning outcomes and comply with the relevant literacy, numeracy, health and safety aspects of the qual. Learners registered on this qualification um, should not undertake any other qualification at the same level. As I mentioned previously, there may be a duplication of um, learning and it may affect funding. Um, this document comes from the Department of Education and contains the standards for all the essential digital skills qualifications and contains detailed information on what each standard means. So it's useful to refer to this alongside the qualification spec that you'll find on Qualhub. Now this slide contains the hyperlink um, in which you can access once you've received the um, PowerPoints, which I will send after today's session. Now there are five sections that make up the essential um, digital skills qualification. So being safe and responsible online, using devices and handling information, they may be best to be planned in at the start of your, of your delivery for learners at entry level three. It would also be useful to cover the communication section before making online transactions, as learners will need to have an email address set up before they're able to make online transactions. You can now see the um, guided learning hours for each section. The completion of all mandatory content to include controlled assessment is completed under supervised conditions. Therefore, the guided learning hours and the total qualification time are identical. And to make cross-referencing um, the assessments and quality assurance easier, we've used a sequential numbering system for each section of the content. Now, the learning outcomes for being safe and responsible online are listed on the slide, and you'll also find them in the qual spec and the material section on Qualhub, which we will cover a little bit later on. Now, this slide's useful to compare the differences between the levels. So, for instance, at entry level, um, learners will need to be have an awareness of online risks and threats and be able to use simple methods to protect the device from online risks and threats. And at level one, learners will need to be able to protect devices and data from online threats and risks. At level one, learners will need to be able to back up data and use a, um, a cloud provider and use appropriate language and behavior, where at entry level, this is not covered. 
Using devices and handling information covers content such as using devices, finding and evaluating information, managing and storing information, identifying and solving technical problems. And we can now see the content differs between the levels with learners needing to understand the hierarchy and tagging for efficient information retrieval at level one, where at entry level three, learners only need to be able to open and read files and have an appropriate name and conventions. Creating and editing section covers creating and editing documents, digital media and processing numerical data. There is more detail on the content of this section in our recorded sessions that we will provide a link to at the end of today's webinar. The online communication section covers all forms of online communication, sharing information online, and also covers digital footprint and how learners can take steps to manage their online identity. The digital transaction section covers using online services and bullying and securely and being secure online. At level one, learners will need to be able to make comparisons and be able to manage account settings. Whereas at entry level three, learners only need to be able to make a purchase and submit a form while complying with verification checks. Now, we're gonna have a look at the assessment structure. And the assessment consists of two components. So you've got section A, which is the knowledge, and section B, which is the skills. So you can now see the percentage weightings for entry level three and level one for section A, the knowledge section. The assessment is the process of measuring a learner's skill, knowledge and understanding against the standard set in the qualification. And this qualification is externally set internally marked and externally quality issued. You can now see the approximate um, percentage weightings for entry level three and level one for section B, which is the skills section. And completing both sections A and B will give one mark for the paper and that will either report either a pass or a fail. So it is very similar to functional skills qualification where a learner must take the whole paper again if they don't pass rather than, than being able to carry over a mark from one section. So learners will be entitled to unlimited resets. However, they will not be permitted to reset the same assessment. If a learner has attempted all live papers, they will not be able to reset until the new version is available. If a learner requires um, a reset, they would need to set both sections of the assessment. So that would be section A and B. And if the learner does not achieve their assessment, they could have um, a period of teaching and learning before resetting um, the next assessment. And the learners will get one free reset with their registration fee. And then after that, it will be five pound per assessment. And all the assessments must be um, externally quality assured. Um, centres cannot sort of state a pass or fail and learners cannot reset an assessment until the um, AQA period has been completed. And also centres can apply for um, direct claim status as well. So, for both entry level three and level one, there is a multi-choice question paper for section A, followed by a task paper for um, section B. At entry level three, there are a maximum of 13 marks um, available for the multi-choice section, and at level one, 17 marks are available. And for section B, the task-based paper, there will be 28 marks available at entry level three and 42 marks at level one. Now, as previously mentioned, that um, qualifications are externally set by NCFE, then internally assessed, and the exams are sat under controlled assessment conditions. At entry level three, 85 minutes are allowed with 20 minutes for the multi-choice question paper and 65 minutes for the task-based paper. At 
Entry level one, 145 minutes are allowed with 25 minutes for the multi-choice question paper and 120 minutes for the task-based paper. If a learner completes paper A in less than the allocated time, they still only have the 65 minutes or 120 um, minutes for paper B. The paper must be sat in one sitting. However, a 50 minute supervised break is built into the platform between section A and B, which can be ended before the 15 minutes if necessary. For section A, the multi-choice section, there is only one possible correct answer. And here we have an example of a question from the entry level three sample paper. This question assesses um, content from the being safe and responsible online section. And I'm just gonna give you a moment to, um, to read the question and then pop your answer into the chat box. So which one of the following is a possible physical stress caused by using a computer? So if you could just pop your answers into the, um, into the um, question box, that would be great. Brilliant and see answers coming in. And yep, that's great. So it is option D. So well done if you got that right. Now, this next question assesses learners' knowledge of using digital device as um, content. Again, I'll give you a moment just to um, read the question and then just pop your answer into the um, question box. and see some answers coming in. I'll just give a few more seconds. So of course the answer is D um, to search for a website. So well done if you got that right. Now, this is an example of the multi-choice question at level one from the transaction digital section. Again, I'll just give you a moment to read the question and then pop your answer into the question box. Lovely at and see answers coming in. And of course, the answer is B. So well done, everybody who got that right. And um, this next question relates to the digital communication. And it's especially rev relevant given how we've been all working during the pandemic. So again, if you can read the question and the available options and just pop your answer into the chat. Brilliant, the answers are coming in really quickly. So it is D. Um, and you might like to um, use a question like this as part of your delivery with learners stating why the other three options wouldn't, wouldn't be appropriate as well. So for section B, um, this is an example of an entry level task that would be set to assess learners ability to use online digital communication. So the scenario is set out at the beginning and then the learner must download and save the phone for sale document, apply formatting to the document, use the cut and paste facility, resize, align an image, and the learner would need to upload the completed document after editing and saving. And this is um, a simple question that learners would need to complete in the task bait part of um, the assessment at level one. Again, the scenario is placed at the start of the question and learners download the do's and don'ts document. And this has already been sort of created for them. At level one, they'll be using additional picture um, formatting tools such as brightness and contrast, resizing, um, applying a filter to an image, along with inserting and creating a table and copying and pasting information into that table along with other formatting tools. The do's and don'ts document then needs to be saved in local storage depending on how your PCs are set up. This could be on your network drive or on the PC's hard drive. A screenshot of the do's and don'ts document saved in the local storage location is required in addition to the document itself. So the learner will be uploading two documents um, here. And after the assessment, 
Anything stored and successfully uploaded by the learner should then be destroyed as it does form part of the assessment materials. Um, the mark scheme here is for the um, previous level one question. Um, it's fairly detailed, showing how the marks will be allocated if learners don't complete the task with complete accuracy. So for instance, in part A and B, if learners don't get the correct number of rows or columns for their table, or if they only place one image in the right place rather than the two required for both marks, the expressive nature of the mark scheme should make it simple to mark learners' work so that standardisation within the centre is quite straightforward. And we've made a recording to show you how you could standardise the um, task-based section. And you can find this on our um, training page on Qualhub. OK, we'll now move on to delivery in Qualhub and the key areas you'll need for successful um, delivery of the ADSQ programme. I'll take the opportunity to remind you, if you do have any questions, and um, please pop them into the question box. Now, thinking about your delivery and getting to know your learners and understand what has brought them to you for this essential digital skills qualification is going to be vital in engaging them fully with the content and enabling you to tailor your teaching so that it's relevant and it will fit in with their lives. So if you already have learners registered um, for your ADSQ, can you just pop into the um, question box any information you already know about them? So that could be in terms of the demographics, maybe the age, any learning difficulties they may have, or just any obstacles to engagement. So if you have got any um, learners registered, if you could just pop what you already know about them into the question box. Thank you, Rebecca. Yep, learning difficulties, financial difficulties, absolutely. So, um, local to the area, as I've been referred by a job centre, yep. So again, yes, a mixed age range, yes, yeah, so it, you're going to have different ages in your class and it'll be an important part of your planning um, to keep all the groups engaged, especially if you've got younger members of the group with more knowledge in certain sections. Um, somebody's put, um, a lot of the learners have not been in a classroom environment for a long time, that is so true. Um, so. Another point is to remember that the, the might not had a good experience either the last time they were in a classroom or, or last in education. So factoring that into your planning is going to be vital as well. So thank you so much for your input there. If we just take a look at the types of people represented in this slide, can you think of any sort of hooks from the content that will help these people benefit from the qualification? And how will that impact upon your ability to engage them? So if you can just let me know in the question box again, that would be good. So what might their barriers to learning be and how could these be overcome? Yep, somebody's put techno dinosaur, definitely. Yep, people might want to learn how to track health and fitness online. Definitely help with the job search. Yep, people might just be lacking in confidence and, and, and can get stressed out by technology. Language barriers, that's a consideration. And then communicate and use an um, IT. So fabulous examples. Thank you for your input there. Now, let's look at what a typical educator and learner journey looks like for the Essential Digital Skills Qualification. So currently, we are at the onboarding stage. And following this webinar and the resources that we can guide you to, you should be in a position to begin to plan your course delivery and take your learners through their initial and diagnostic assessment. And after you deliver the subject content, 
and the learner hopefully finds it engaging and stimulating so that they learn the content, they will then be ready to review what they've learned, prepare for their assessment, and then finally take the assessment. So the final stage for you as a tutor teacher, after your learners have their results, is to review what has gone well with your delivery and what can be improved, and then use this feedback to plan for your next cohort or for learners who may need further teaching and learning before a reset. Now, moving on to QualHub and how you can access vital information for essential digital skills, the website address can be seen on the screen now, and this will take you to the landing page for um, QualHub. If you select delivery and learner support, this will take you to the delivery and learner support page, and you will notice an essential digital skills tile here. If you select this, you'll be taken to a central point for all your support and information you'll need for the essential digital skills qual. Now, the qualification information tile will give you access to all the relevant um, qualification information and support guidance for the essential digital skills by selecting the um, links available. These links will give you access to the information pages. So the most important documents that can be found here is the qual spec. Um, I do recommend you always use the document um, from QualHub because it it may get updated. So if you download it and save it, um, always ensure you're um, referring to the most um, recent version. And the um, version number will be noted on the bottom left hand side of the spec. Now, from the qualification information page, um, you'll, you can either um, select the three tabs um, highlighted and it will take you to the following menu in which you can select and access the support material, um, accessible material, teacher material and ad adaptations. Within this section you can download the qual spec as previously mentioned along with the support handbook and a qualification fact sheet. When you select the assessment material um, tab, you can access the assessor guidance for the controlled assessment, the regulations for conduct, along with um, the user guides. And it's important to mention here for the live assessment, you will need to register and book the ADSQ exam on the portal. The portal will transfer the booking directly to um, Surpass. You will then need to download and install Surpass Viewer. And Surpass Viewer is the is basically a web browser that you would need to, to access the Surpass system. And Surpass is the main administration system for all your booked assessments. So um, you must access Surpass through the Surpass Viewer. Now we're going to have a um, take a look at the support available to you. So let's turn now to the support you can expect from NCFA going forward. Um, the provider development team are committed to NCFA's core purpose of promoting and advancing learning. And to achieve this, we plan to engage with you in curriculum consultations at three different stages. So we've got induction as part of your onboarding to get you started with your delivery and to prepare you for pre-assessment preparation, signpost to sample papers and assessing teaching and learning resources. Um, and I know some of you may have already had your initial um, consultations, but we will be in touch with all centres who do gain approval for um, ADSQ. At the midpoint to check on your delivery and to signpost you to key quality assurance processes in preparation for your live assessments, which for many of you, um, your timeframes may vary on your delivery model. So we will plan in your midpoint um, consultations accordingly. And then your final review to discuss and reflect on um, your delivery. 
the curriculum team will support teachers and staff through the onboarding period where support interventions and events will be available to access and this will include our onboarding webinars to get you started with delivery and support centres with an ongoing programme of CPD looking at topical and relevant areas of interest and these will take place once a quarter. Now, to support your delivery, we have several learning resource options available through QualHub in the Teaching um, Materials tab of each of the qualification pages. These resources are designed to be used in all your classroom settings and can be shared on your VLE. Now, the first options we have for you are our free, freely downloadable schemes of work. The five schemes of work for each qualification are written to cover each of the qualification sections. And the schemes include suggested learning activities, timings, additional resources, ideas including links to websites, videos and online articles. And these are an essential starting point for any centre. Within this section, you'll have access to the Essential Digital Skills um, Glossary. Our second option is to purchase the digital resource pack. This pack is an all-in-one digital package of resources for you to support your learners. And this package would cost £900 inclusive of VOT. And the pack includes 23 um, sessions of engaging PowerPoints that cover all the learning outcomes. All PowerPoint slides can be altered to allow flexibility for tutors to make um, more learner co um, cohort specific examples so you can add things to them. Associated worksheets and support materials for the sections and a digital um, learner workbook that can be shared with all your learners as a great reference point in a place to save um, samples of their work. Now, this digital resource pack is versatile and editable, and it's an easy way to support classroom delivery. This pack, combined, um, combined with the freely downloadable schemes of work, complete the set. And centres purchasing this digital um, package of resources can use them um, with an unlimited number of tutors and registered learners. So the one-off fee will include any updates and any revisions to the learning materials if and when required. Now, the third option would be um, our resource pack that does not have the learner workbook included. And this pack costs £120 inclusive of um, VAT. And this pack contains um, the 23 PowerPoints, worksheets and where relevant spreadsheets and images to support in classroom delivery. Again, you are free to change the order of your PowerPoints to suit your learners' requirements. And for example, they are suggested starter activities and they can be completed either before or after outlining your session um, learning outcomes. Or you may wish to add any images, any community forum links or social media page that's relevant to your group, which is a great opportunity to provide local application of learning. Um, a sample pack is available to download for either of the resource um, options which is a good opportunity for you to have a little preview prior to purchasing. And you'll be able to do this on the checkout page before you actually click purchase. There'll be a little tab where you can just click um, download sample. And finally, our learning resource offer is to have the learner workbooks printed for you on a demand print for um, learner workbooks. You can also order binders to store your workbooks in. The learner workbooks complete the resource pack by providing a comprehensive overview of the qualification. The workbooks contain clear and engaging directions for learners to refer to later, as well as practice activities to help recap and recall learning. I will provide a link to QualHub at the end of today's webinar so you can get the links to these. Um, the content team do welcome any suggestions that you would like to see in future resources. So please do get in touch if you have any ideas you would like to put forward as well. Um, I'm just going to um, check to see if we've got any um, questions coming in. 
regarding the resources and I can't see any just yet but we will come back to the questions later on. Um, we have um, created some very short recordings that go over the content of the five sections in more detail with some areas of how you could teach parts of the contents and these can be found um, by clicking on the following links and these will be on Qualhub in the Essential Digital Skills tile. Um, I'm now going to launch our final poll before moving on to questions and um, I just want to know if you feel any more confident and if, if your knowledge has improved um, with the Essential um, Digital Skills Qual. So I'm going to launch the poll. You just bear with us one moment. So how confident do you now feel regarding your knowledge of um, the essential digital skills qualification? We're nearly all voted. I'll just give a few more people a few more moments just to get the votes in. If you are having trouble using the poll, um, just put your results in the question box and I'll be able to access them from there as well. Brilliant, that looks like we've got all the votes in and um, we are at 50%. So 50% um, of everybody on today is between a seven and an eight. And then we have 50% at a three and a four. Um, if you are a new uh, um, approved centre, you will um, get a, a contact email from me inviting you to um, a curriculum consultation so um, if you want anything to go through or if there's any questions um, I'll be able to book in a consultation with you um, so look out for your emails but we will be in touch with everybody. So I'll just close the poll. And um, we're at the questions and answers section now. Um, I'm just checking the question box to see if we have anything coming through. And um, somebody has asked, um, do the learners see their marks for the multi-choice section before moving on to the next section? And can the assessor see the marks? Um, well, the results for um, section A, the multi-choice will be automatically marked for you, but learners cannot see the marks. Um, once the assessment is over, the assessor or the tutor will be able to see the marks. However, they'll not be able to amend them or, um, or let the learners know what the mark is until section B has gone through your, um, your internal and external um, process. Is there any cost involved in learner reset? Yes, um, I think we mentioned previously that um, you get one reset with your registration fee and then it will be £5 per learner per reset after that. Um, when do assessments take place? Um, these are on demand and they need to be booked through the portal and then they'll be sat online through surplus. 
how quickly after registration can a learner set an online assessment? Good question. So once a learner is registered on the portal, it takes about 30 minutes for their registration details to be pulled through to surpass. And then um, your centre will then be able to book the assessment through, through, um, through the portal. So just a reminder, I'm your contact for support relating to teaching and learning and support with planning and preparation for your assessments. Your account manager will support you with any additional products or development. And the customer support team are there as a first line of inquiry regarding um, the portal or any issues registering your learners or anything to do with Surpass. And I've also included a contact email for our skills assessment team. So if you are interested in arranging a demo of our assessment tools, um, please do get in touch or, or pop a little message into the question box and I will pass that information over. Okay, so we've reached the end of today's session and I would just like to say many thanks for everybody um, for attending and your participation today. And please, if you can, um, complete our evaluation form as you do log out. We really do rely on your feedback and ideas to inform our um, CPD activities. And I would just like to say take care, goodbye, and I really do look forward um, with working with you in the future. Thank you.